I never felt so lonely in my whole life as when I moved to the United States from Russia in 2011. I came on a scholarship at the Library of Congress and got so lonely that I was about to start talking to my toaster. <laughs> but then I got lucky and met someone. We were the only regulars in the European reading room and I introduced myself. She said, I'm Rebecca. I thought, would it be appropriate to say that I like biblical names? But instead I asked about her research. She said, I'm working on my PhD about influence of Italian folklore on Dominica Scarlatti's early sonatas. <laughs> Nothing came to my mind about Dominica Scarlatti's early sonatas and I regretted that I dismissed my biblical line. <laughs> then I told her that I was working on my paper about Muslim rescue of Jews during the Holocaust. She said, oh, that's funny. I'm Jewish. I said, I'm a Muslim. I hope that's funny too. <laughs> Suddenly she asked me, would you rescue me? And I said, are you in trouble? <laughs> she said, I might be. That's when the librarian gave us shut up look. <laughs> and I never learned why Rebecca was in trouble. Uh, we met uh, several times in the library and talked about our research a lot and flirted a little. And I decided to make my move on the Valentine's Day. Actually, I decided to make two moves, just to be sure. <laughs> As my first move, I invited Rebecca to a cozy little coffee shop on Pennsylvania Avenue. We had tea and shared a slice of lemon cake. I usually compliment my date's nails as an icebreaker. <laughs> so I took Rebecca's hand and said, I like that you don't do your nails. <laughs> She said, are you sure you like women? <laughs> I said, not all women, but you definitely. We fought over the last piece of the cake and I opened my mouth encouraging her to feed it to me, which she surprisingly did. And I said, take half of it. <laughs> she took the cake with her lips out of my lips and said, that was the funniest first kiss ever. <laughs> we left the coffee shop holding hands and headed toward the metro. And I realized that if I let her go, that would be the end of it. And I didn't want it to end. So I was glad that I prepared my second move. I said, I should buy you a Valentine's card. She said, oh, that's nice. There is a CVS store on the way to metro. I knew that <laughs> because earlier that day, I went to that CVS, bought a card, wrote an inscription and put it back behind other cards so that nobody would buy it accidentally. <laughs> I let Rebecca pick her own card and out of the wall of Valentine's cards, she went to the one I bought earlier after she failed five times and I had to <laughs> tuck her out of it. But before she opened the card, I said, let's steal it and make it memorable. <laughs> she smiled kindly, but said firmly, no, let's not do that. <laughs> I said, fine, I'll do it alone. And I took the card out of her hand. She stopped smiling and said, I'm gonna tell the manager. <laughs> so I moved toward the exit and Rebecca moved toward the counter. And I calmed myself, everything's under control. I paid for the card earlier and I had the receipt in my pocket and I exited the store. But turned out that Rebecca was bluffing and she exited after me without the SWAT team surrounding me. <laughs> I offered her the card, but she snapped at me. I said, why don't you just open it? And if you don't like it, I will return it. 
She looked puzzled and reluctantly opened the card and read, Rebecca, how lucky can one guy be? I kissed you and you kissed me. Happy Valentine's Day. She said, did you set this up? <laughs> and I was happy to see how she turned from wolfish back into foxy. <laughs> I took her hands, looked into her beautiful blue eyes and said, I've been looking for someone like you since I came here. She kissed me and said, do you want to show me a place? I thought, hallelujah. <laughs> It felt like the beginning of a meaningful relationship. And for the first time in many months, I didn't feel lonely anymore. Rebecca pulled me in close, kissed me on the lips and then on the neck, and then whispered into my ear, I am married. <laughs> my heart sank and I sat down on the sofa and she sat on my lap. I thought, this feels like breaking the seventh commandment <laughs> about not committing adultery. Or is it the eighth one? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty far down the list. <laughs> I thought, Apparently, her marriage didn't work and uh, she's trying to move on. And it occurred to me, maybe this is what she meant when asking me to rescue her. And I said, I've heard that such things happen to others, but I never thought that I would fall in love with a married woman. And she said, and I never thought that I would fall in love with two men. Suddenly, I felt even lonelier than before I met her. I realized that whatever we share with each other, would be just stolen, much more so than my pseudo-stolen Valentine's card. I never saw Rebecca again, but she remained in my heart as the first American woman to break my heart. And since then, before making any move, I always ask my date directly, are you married? <laughs> <laughs> 